this gift that he has given to us. So great salvation. You're glad to be saved. How about you? And all of our lady have are enjoying the trip. way to heaven and I'm enjoying the truth. Amen. 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 You the Lord's people here today. I'm going to ask you if you would stand in Judges the 17th chapter in the 6th verse and then 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Genesis 17, 6 says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 says, Now all these things happened unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the end of the worlds are come. Now, Father, we just ask that you would give us of your word, that you would speak to our hearts, your eternal word, that it be fruitful in us, O oh God, that it multiply and bring forth thirty, sixty, even a hundredfold, that you give us ears to hear, and heart and mind to receive your word and to be, be obedient to it, and we'll give you praise for it. Now word us today and give us the strength that is needed, and we'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. We pray, thank God. Let saints say amen. amen. Man to see every man. And every man did that was, was right in his own eyes. And when we do that which is right in our own five eyes, then we fool ourselves. Yes. So when we fool yes. ourselves. Now, the society in decline is a society that has not learned from his past mistakes. And really, what we see around us, we didn't get to this place overnight. It has been a slow, methodical pull away from the truth of God's word, from his divine and inspired word. And it's the embracing of man's corrupt and distorted philosophy. And when we embrace our own philosophies, then this opens up ourselves squarely to the hands of Satan. Yes. And his perverted intent is to destroy mankind. Yes. Yes. And a, a, a society that is void of God is a society that is on the brink of destruction. And every man did what was right in his own eyes. Now the whole book of Judges is basically the earlier part of the book is based on the pattern of rebellion, repentance, and then restoration. But the pattern changes from that pattern of rebellion, repentance, and restoration to an outward apostasy. Yes. And it is basically the acceptance and embracing of all that which is unholy and ungodly. It became an atmosphere of self-determination and self-gratification. When, there's, when there is religious apostasy, mm -hmm. yes. there will be political disorganization right. and social chaos. Yes. Amen. 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 Nation will be turned into hell. Yes. Wicked shall be turned into hell. Yes. And all nations that forget God. Yes. Psalms 9 and 17. In the 17th and 18th chapters, of Judges, 
we see a distorted worship. Yes. Yes. Distorted worship. Yes. Proverbs 3, 12 and 13 says, This is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. Mm -hmm. This is a generation of how lofty are their eyes. Yes. And their eyelids are lifted yes. up. In the 17th and 18th chapters of Judges, we see a man by the name of Micah mm -hmm. who was at the Mount of Ephraim who stole money from his mother. Yes. He replaces the money, but what he does is he sets up his own worship. He sets up a shrine, a shrine in his house uh -huh. featuring a silver idol. Amen. And then he ordained his own sons as a priest. Yeah. Now later on what happens is there was a Levite who came from Bethlehem, Judea. And he came by because at that time when you would go to houses uh, it wasn't like you go to a hotel to stay. Amen. He was passing through the area so he came into the house of Micah and Micah saw that he was a Levite. Yes. Yes. And so basically what he did was he hired this Levite Amen. to become his priest. Mm -hmm. Priest over the idol that he had built in his house. Mm -hmm. So basically Micah had built a religion of his own. He had basically felt as though he could build his own God. Every man did what that which was right in his own eyes. So from verses 5 and 12 of the 17th chapter, we see him making his own priesthood. And he basically paid this Levite told him, listen, if you come and be with me, I'll pay you. And I'll give you clothes and I'll give you food. So basically the Levite who himself should have known the word of God and was supposed to be a teacher of the word of God had been bought by Micah to be a priest over an idol God. And in the 13th verse of the 17th chapter, we see that Micah's distorted view led him to believe that God was with him in what he was doing. That's what we live today. We folks do their stuff and then say God is with them. Thirteen verse says, Then said Micah, Now, now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. I know the Lord has blessed me now. Because I got this Levite, this backslid Levite, to be my priest. And so he feels as though God is with him. And don't we see that today? People worshiping false gods. Not the true and living God of the Bible. And feel as though that they're blessed. And they're going to get prosperity outside of fellowship with God. Which leads us into the 18th chapter because in the 18th chapter there was a tribe of Dan that was moving to the north. And the search party passed by Micah's house and found the Levite that they knew. Now what happened was when they went to the house and the Levite was there, when he began to talk, they knew that he was not of that area. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. And what they said was basically they wanted him to bless them on their endeavor. Notice, 
When men do what is right with their own eyes, with, in their own eyes, then they feel like basically that they can get blessed however they can get it. Amen. Whatever it takes, they're going to get something on their side. Amen. And so they, they wanted him to bless them. And, and basically what happened was, there was a group there that said, listen, we you don't have to be the priest or the high priest of just this house. Amen. Talking to the Levite. Amen. What we can do is you can be the high priest of this whole tribe. Amen. You, you, you can be over all of us. You know, when, 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 we, when we do what was right in our own eyes, then we look for prestige. Amen. Because pride goes before destruction. And outside of fellowship with God, if God is not our God, something else is going to take its place. Amen. Amen. And, and, the, and the bottom line is a spirit of pride yes. will take one's heart over yes. Amen. when we don't submit our hearts to God. Amen. And so they told him, listen now, you, you don't have to be over this house. You can be over a whole tribe. In verses 11, 11 through 26, it says a large group came to Micah's house, stole the objects from his shrine, and invited the Levite to come with them and be their tribal priest. So he basically said, listen, you can be over all of us. So they stole. Now this, 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 this ought to show you something. How can you have a God that somebody will steal? Amen. Well, you're laughing, but a lot of us got gods that folks are stealing. Your home is your God. Your, your car is your God. Your prestige is your God. Your job is your God. And anything that, that you make a God, it can be easily stolen. But my God, you can't steal my God. You can't break my God. <laughs> You can't wreck my God. Amen. I serve the true and living God. How about you? Amen. And as a matter of fact, I don't have to take my God with me because he'll go with me wherever I go. So I don't have to have him here and then move him over there. All right. Amen. And so notice what, so they say, listen now, you, you join in with us. You join in with us and be our priest. Now notice this. We have to understand that in the uh, earlier when we look at Joshua, the book of Joshua, Joshua had laid out for them. Yes, he did. Had told Israel, yes. your success, your blessings are serving the true and living God. Yes. The God that brought you out of Egypt, yes. out of the house of bondage, yes. had told them thou shalt have no other gods before thee. Yes. Now we see the deterioration, and now that when there's a deterioration that comes in our heart, there becomes a distortion of worship. Yes. Amen. And so we become an individual that just worships anything. Yes. Are you listening? So notice our social, notice our, 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 our social makeup today. Folks are worshiping anything. Yes, they are. Amen. Because they have voided out the true and living God. The, uh, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Yes, right. And so because they have blinded their eyes to the true God, now you see people worshiping at the feet of everything. Yes, yes. Are you listening? And so notice they say, you come and be with us. And so basically what was happening was the, the, the portion of the tribe of Dan, they wanted some new land. And so there was a, 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 a city there that they wanted to take over. Now this city was not in the, the borders of where God had told them that they would occupy the land. So when you're void of God, then you're void of the word of God, then you're void of the ordinance of God, then you're void of the commandments of God. 
So notice, when you don't have God, then you don't have his structure, then you don't have his order. So you don't have the word of God to go by in his direction. So you do whatever comes to your mind. So basically they had stepped out of line to go and take over this, this, this city that God had not told them to do. So notice that. We see, we see a day now where people are doing any and everything because they don't have the word of God to center them. And that, that can come even in the church. We, you could be in the church, but if you don't have the word in you, you're yet going to have a mind to do whatever you want. And see, the bad thing, apostasy, is when you justify what you do. Then you legitimize what you do. Are you listening to me? And if I don't moan, just go along with me. We're doing a Bible study today. So what do we see? A distorted worship. When we're outside of God, when, we're, when God is not at the center of our life, then all of a sudden we make our own God. See, man has to worship something. Because God made us to worship. God made man to worship him. Man is God's glory on the earth. And he made man to give that glory back to God. So in every person that has been born of Adam is the place that only God is to have. And if God is not there, you're going to find yourself making a God out of anything else. Are you listening to me? And so notice, notice, then we see a deterioration of values and standards. So if our worship is, is not in God, then we'll have no values. We'll have no moral standards. Can't you see around us? The reason why you see there is no moral standard because folks don't want to respect the true God. Psalms 9 to 17 again says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Notice this in the 19th chapter of Judges. Now this is, notice, this is I'll show you something. A Levite. Now this is another Levite. See that I'll show you something right there. The folks who are supposed to know the word are the ones who have turned away from God. In the 18th chapter uh, we saw a Levite who was supposed to know the word and what does he do? He, he's raised up as a false teacher yes. because now he's a bought and paid for that's what's going on today you got a lot of preachers bought and paid for yes. they won't cry out against anything because they're in somebody's pocket yes. they're in somebody's pocket or up somebody's skirt but anyway and I'm going to preach anyway. I'm just going to sit there anyway. So, you're not gonna just go so you, you can't cry against nothing and you're a part of it. So notice in, 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 this, in the uh, 18th chapter we see this Levite and he's bought and paid for and he becomes a priest to a false god. Yeah. Now this, look at this now. We have another Levite in the 19th chapter and this Levite has a concubine. Lord help us. Now God didn't want them to have concubines. Now see, in, in the night in the I believe the seventeenth chapter of Acts, it said that God winked at that stuff. Yeah, he winked at it. But he ain't winking now. He winked then, but he's not winking now. Yeah, let me go to the uh, 17 and 30 of Acts it says and, and the times of this ignorance God winked that but now commanded all men everywhere to repent so he winked at the concubine in the Old Testament but he ain't winking now now the Levite has a concubine and she runs away from him 
and goes to her father's house. And he goes with his servant to go get her. And what happened was he stayed at the father's house for several days. He and the father entreats him to stay there with him a little longer. Till finally, the, the final day, he sets out and he leaves about in the afternoon. He leaves to go back to his home. Now what happened was this. He comes to the territory. Now later on we will see when you go to uh, uh, First Samuel and Second Samuel when we deal with David becoming king. David takes over the territory of the Jebusites. And one of the cities that was there, he turns that into Bethlehem, into uh, Jerusalem. So he makes that the fortune of Jerusalem. But now in the book of Judges, that territory is still occupied by the Jebusites. So what happens as this Levite is going home, as the night approaches, there's a territory occupied by the Jebusites, but he says, listen, I'm not going to stay there because these folks are strangers. Right. I'm going to stay in Gibeah because Gibeah was under the tribe of Benjamin. So he said, these are my people, so I'll stay in that city. Now he stays there and, and he goes into the city and he and his servants and the concubine and he has uh, his, cow, his, his animals and all of that, that mules or whatever he had trapped on at that time. And they're basically in the city. They're not at anyone's house at that time. And evening or a night is coming and there's an old gentleman that comes along and says, listen, why are you all out here? And he tells him, well, I'm out here. I got everything I need, so I'm not going to be a burden on anybody. I just, you know, need somewhere to stay. He said, well, come on and go with me. You stay in my house. And stay until the because see at night, see what like we do at night where you got lights all in the street and all that is, although we got all these lights and there's still trouble in the streets. Right. Right. You know, they had thieves. See, thieves and robbers always act at that night. Right. And so he said, listen, you come stay with us. Or stay with me until the daybreak and then you can go on. And so he says, no problem, I'll I stay right there. I, I, I'll stay at your house. Well, something then happens. Something happens. In the 22nd verse uh, of that 19th chapter, it, this sounds familiar. Now this, this, this sounds very familiar. The Bible says that the sons of Bela, a group of men, come knocking on the door. And you know what they say? We know you got a stranger in there. We want them to come out that we can know him. We want to know him. Now, for you to for you to understand that, no means in a sexual term. Like Adam knew Eve. We want you to bring him out here. So don't you see the culture that we're in? That folks are knocking at your door for your children, talking about sending them out. Because they want to know them. Are y'all with me? Yeah. It says here now as they were making their hearts merry. Behold the men of the city, sons of Belial. They set the house round about. And beat at the door. And spake to the master of the house, the old man saying. Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. That we may know him. Now this is not the Gentile city. This is a city of the tribe of Benjamin. Meaning now, when our worship is off, then we don't hear the word of God. And when we don't hear the word of God, there's no standard, there's no value. Amen. So men begin to do what they think is right. 
And that's what we see, we see today. We see a culture today where it's void of the true God. Because when we don't have the true God, we don't have his son Jesus. Because you can't have Jesus without God. And when you don't have that fellowship and that relationship, then what you see is a culture that just begins to do whatever comes to them. So whatever base spirit that takes control of them, they begin to give over to. Whatever base, because no, you're either going to be under the control of God or under the control of the devil. There is no in between. Because you may think, well, the devil is not controlling me. But if you're thinking you're controlling yourself, then the devil is right there working with you. You can, can you, well, see, I know, no, I understand this. We have, as, as a, a, notice this, God is a spirit, right? They that worship him must worship him as what? Spirit and truth. God is a spirit. So when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, he comes into our life. Is that right? He comes into our life. So what happens is he takes control of our life. So he leads us how? By the spirit of God. Is that right? So what happens is that word of God is not just all paper, but it becomes a part of us. Because where? We're in God. So the word is not just something sitting on the in this book or on pages. It becomes written in our heart. So that gives us, hallelujah, the direction on how we're to live. But not only that, it gives us power over the wiles of the enemy. Because just because you're saved doesn't mean that the devil doesn't come against you. Or just because you're saved doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't come to try and pull you in to what he wants you in. But you have victory over it because you're what? In Jesus Christ. But now if you're outside of God and you're into your own thing, you don't have any power against the enemy. So whatever the enemy you think is you bringing it to your mind, but it's the devil bringing it to your mind. So they said, listen, well, well, you know, let him come out so that we can, we can know him. Notice, a, a culture that's void of God is a culture that's void of standards, void of value. And that's why, and you know, it's the, you see, that's why believers, you, you can't, this is not about a group of people that are, see, understand it. First of all, we need to understand. We are all of one, one blood. Whether a person is Caucasian yeah. or, or dark skin, Amen. we're all of one blood. Amen. One God made all man. Amen. So we we may have different ethnicities, but we're one race. We're the human race. See, it's not a race of black folk and a race. No, no. We are all different ethnicities. But we're all one race. Are you listening to me? And that's why you cannot have a race of people that are homosexual. There is no race of people that are homosexual. I wish I had some problem with that. And, and, and what is happening now is, is even with, you know, when it comes out to the church, because we don't have an understanding of the scripture, we say, well, well, they, you know, they're people just like, yeah, that's true. They're people. That's true. But they're people that have to come out of sinful behavior. Because you weren't born like that. I don't care what folks are trying to say, what scientists are trying to say, which is a lot from the pit. You weren't born like that. It's a spirit behind it. And notice how that spirit always wants to make itself feel, make others feel as though it's all right and it's legitimate. I 
wish I had some. I'm going to run up here speaking. Y'all right down there. Y'all going to be saying amen. You ain't got to be scared. I'm the one that will take the brunt for it. You know. Notice this. This is, a, this is a city that is in the territory of those that should know God. And you've got individuals in that city that have let the enemy take over their mind. To make them believe that they are sexually attracted to another man. And so much so until you have, just like in Chicago, where you have Pride Day. Notice how Pride Day. Gay pride, homosexual Pride Day. Because first of all, stop using the word gay because they ain't happy. It's homosexual. Gay means happy. It don't mean homosexual. But because anytime you change a word, any, you can adapt it to what you want it to be. Because you ain't happy rubbing up on another baby. You ain't happy. I'm sorry. Two beers running together ain't, and that don't make me happy. Y'all decided, but I'm going to preach it anyway. You ain't happy. I can understand the man messing up with a woman, but I can't understand your way. Like the old preacher told a young man, he said, son, he said, the, the young man, and, you know, it was years ago when they had those shot, those old houses, you know, shotgun, shotgun, shotgun houses. And he was a young evangelist and ran a meeting and didn't have sister enough to take somebody with him. And his sister invited him to the house. And when she came to the door and he went in, he go to the door, she grabbed him. And he came to the preacher and was crying, repenting, asking him son. He said, son, I forgive you. You have sense that time. Now, we're we going to end the revival, but you have sense next time. And the preacher said, you know what? I couldn't have took that myself. So, <laughs> so he said he couldn't have took that himself. <laughs> Y'all looking at me. God made man for woman. He made a man to be attracted to a woman. Now, not, not every woman now. He didn't do that. That's lust. That's lust. If you got a little boy, you ought to be glad he running up over the birds. I didn't say playing with their dolls. I understood. So we see. Even in this city that is, is supposed to be under the auspices of people who know God, when there is no God there, it opens up to everything else. When the true living God is not at the center, every time, every other type of spirit is going to come in. And so notice what happens. So, so they... He, the, 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 the gentleman says, listen, I, I got daughter in here. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? Yeah. Because yeah. earlier in Genesis, this is about the same thing happened. Yeah. So now, I want you also to understand. Understand this. See, anytime you study the, the Word of God and you see something hap repeatedly happening, yes. you see this is not something that's an isolated incident. Yeah. So it lets you know that God is displeased yes. with that type of behavior. Yes. Are you hear what I'm saying? Then later on in Romans, Paul comes along and see, I, that's why I got scripture to back up when I'm preaching. So I don't, you know, if you don't want to agree with me, that's your business. But in Romans, the first chapter, he said, because they did not retain God in their knowledge. <laughs> Because they did not retain God in the, that doesn't mean just knowing that there is a God, but did not say that, you know, because there is a God, I have to serve Him. Because they did not let God be God in their life, He gave them over to a reprobated mind. And a reprobated mind is 
where you just want to live what you want to do. And many times in the church, what's happening in the church today is people want to live their lifestyle, but they want the church to conform to what they're in. People want to live in an ungodly. Notice when the word of God says that something is not of God, he means it. Yes, and so yes. when we live in a culture today that wants to say to the church, not only am I going to live it, yes. not only am I going to be a part of this, but you're going to accept it yes. and you're going to change what you yes. teach because you know what? What you're teaching, that glory to God, is, is offensive. Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you the word of God is offensive. Yes. The word of God is going to turn father from son, mother from daughter. The word of God is going to bring up stuff because that's what it's supposed to do. Are you listening today? So he says here later on, uh, uh, 23rd down to 26th verse, he said, let me, let me, I'll give you my maiden, my daughter. Yes. Right. That, that shows you something sick there. Amen. I'm going to give you my daughter. And I'm going to give you his concubine. Yes. Woo. Jesus. Now that also shows you something. Because when, 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 we, when we are void of God, who he is in our life, then we don't have respect for others either. Amen. <laughs> Notice what happens here. That's why, you know, women have been treated so badly. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Because when there's void of God, then you have no respect for the things of God. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. Because really, if they knew God, they wouldn't have to throw anybody Amen. out there. Right? Amen. Because they could believe God and God would have taken care of them. So, and notice what's happening. Notice what happens in this culture. Then, then you throw the women out there. Amen. What's happening in our culture? The women being thrown out there. Yes. Single mothers, they being thrown out yes. there. Yes. Oh, I'm preaching today. Yes. The culture, the enemy is attacking and what's happening? The women being thrown. So they the ones got to fend for the children. Yes, yes. I should be getting some. They the ones got to fight the battle. The, man, the battle that the man is supposed to be fighting, they're fighting. So stuff is out of order. Got to sue you for child support. And you got to fuss over it if it's your child. And you know what? In the African American community, they've got a whole lot of children that need to be adopted. Amen. So what's happening is, when you open up for a homosexual couple to get married, yes. you open up for them to adopt yes. our children yes. and raise them up in a warped, sadistic environment that says two men can act like a man and a woman. Amen. Or two women. Who the man and who the woman? So what they do is they 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 they, they thrust the concubine out. Now this is the man. This is the Levite that went to get her in the first place. She's a concubine, so she's not a wife. In the technical sense, she's a concubine. So sister, if you somebody's concubine, they show you how much he loves you. You ain't the wife. Because if he'd have left her, he'd have left her. It's funny how. And see, that's why the Bible says that women are deceived. Adam wasn't deceived. Adam knew exactly what. That's why God charged Adam and said, you the one. You did it. 
That's why God didn't say, Eve got you. No, he went right to the man. I'm sorry, sisters. I know you ain't going to say amen. But, you know, that's why women can be deceived. All a man has to do is talk that love language. He can be the biggest devil that ever put on a pair of pants. But as long as he got a smooth operation. And listen to what he got to say. Because he's talking. Because a woman uh, is made up of conversation. A woman likes conversation. That's why women can sit there and talk and talk and talk. And you say, don't y'all ever run out of anything? Because a woman is built on conversation. And when she gets a man talking to her, then she, she, she gets connected to him. I am preaching to God. He throws her out there. He throws the concubine out. And the Bible said they abused her. That's why I say a man ain't a man who beats on a woman. Everybody should have said it. No more. Any man that beats on a woman, there's something wrong with him. He either has a warped concept of his mother, or he much a woman than she is. The Bible says they beat on her and abused her. There's nothing new under the sun. We see the same type of behavior happening today. Beat her, raped her. And the Bible says that the next day, now they notice, he, he threw her out there. He Jesus. threw her out there. Oh, yes. 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 To let you know how much he was concerned about it, he yes. threw her out there. Yes. 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 But notice, when there's, when there's a void of who God is, yes. you don't have respect for nobody. Yes. Amen. Basically, the next day, Everything gone. She she crawls to the door <laughs> and dies. <laughs> and to let you know he has no he he has no sympathy, empathy, or whatever. He goes to the door, opens it up, and tells her, "Get up, let's go." That's all he said. Get up. You read it for yourself. Get up, let's go. But she's dead. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. So he takes her dead body. Ooh. I'm showing you how this, this deteriorate, deteriorated yes. a culture can become. Ooh. He cuts her body in 12 pieces. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. And sends each piece to each tribe. Ooh. To let them know what has happened. in the Bible, y'all. All the stuff you watch, you need to read the Bible sometime. You get a whole lot. Cut her into pieces, 12 pieces, and send each piece to each tribe of Israel. So when we get down into the, to the, the 20th step, notice, we, we, we look at The indignation that occurs in the tribal leaders' hearts. Are you with me? So we see decisive consequences for wrong. What happens is they receive the pieces and so 
they become upset about it. And they find out exactly what has happened. And so they rise up against the tribe of Benjamin. Because what happened was, the tri all they asked them to do was, you give us those men who did this. We want the men that did this. But the tribe would not release the men that did it. Which lets me know they were condoning yes. what they did. Yes. And before you become judgmental, a lot of stuff happened in your house. Yes. You condoned it. Yes. Anytime you got folks in your house and they got drugs in there, you condone it. Anytime you got somebody in your house and you know they're involved in something that's illegal, you can know it. And then they, if they come and arrest them, then the folk get on TV talking about, my child wouldn't do no wrong. Are you crazy? Right. Everybody in the city know how messed up they were. You, you're the last person to know. I didn't know they were doing that. How come you didn't know you were living right there with them? It's amazing, you know, we want we want to win souls of Christ. And, and, and then how can you win somebody to Christ and you condone it mess in your own house? We have peace with God. Amen. So the bottom line was that they turned back to God. So, so in order to fight this warfare that we, we see going on, where men, men uh, 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 
do what they want to do, whatever comes to their mind. In order to fight this battle, it's going to be, it has to be yes. a, a God fought battle. Yes, yes, amen, amen. A God, you, you can march all you want to, it still ain't going to change the world. Amen. You can amen. petition all you want to. Amen. It don't change the heart. We go back to all the signs of Second Chronicles 7 14. My people, which are called by my name, yeah, yeah. humble themselves, yes. seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Uh oh. And let me know that God's folk got some wicked ways. Yes. Yes. And folks in the church can have some wicked ways. Yes. Sometimes I would rather deal with sinners than deal with some folk in the church. Yes. That's a hard thing to say. I found out sometimes folk in the street respect you more than folks sitting in the pew. Amen. I guess today I ain't looking for nobody to friend me. And notice what? It drove them back to God. It drove them back to God. And Driving them back to God, they confessed their sin. Yes. Because they knew they needed God to help them defeat Amen. this enemy. Now notice, the tribe of Benjamin had compromised. Yes. Had turned away from God. Yes. Violated the principles of God. Yes. But they were notice defeating those who were making a stand. Mm -hmm. But those who made a stand knew that we can't, we can't. Get this accomplished. Unless we have God on our side. That's right. Are you listening to me? Glory, glory. And in the next battle that they had, 29 through 48, they, they got victory. Now, in this victory, brought about almost the annihilation of the tribe of Benjamin. It almost wiped them completely out. All they had to do was give these few men up. Yes. And none of this would have happened. That's right. Amen. But because pride, notice when pride goes before destruction. And that's just like today. For all folk got to do is just give that mess up. That's right. But rather than give it up, they'll hold on to it. And mad because you're saying something about it. Your life is going down the toilet, but you're still holding on to this stuff. Yes. It's not helping you, but you're still holding on to it. And all of the years, hallelujah, that you're holding on and let your life get involved in it is, 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 is years that's being taken away from you. Which had you just given up in the beginning, hallelujah, your life would be better. Amen. Are you listening today? Notice what, it almost wipes the tribe completely out. But notice, it, it, it reveals to us God's divine mercy. He just extends mercy to the tribe of Benjamin. Why? Because his name is out. Now he had given 12 tribes in the beginning. Had he allowed the tribe of Benjamin to be wiped out, it would go against his word. So what happens is he sets up a system. Uh, almost all of the men and, 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 and children, families have been wiped out. But he sets it up. He says, first of all, there was people from Jabesh Gilead who had not joined in the battle. And so what happened was they said, listen, since you all have joined in this battle to help us fight against this, what we want to do is we want to take 400 of your women. And give them to the men of the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. So they can repopulate. That's right. And then they said, all right, well, they still didn't have enough. Because it was 600, and so they only had 400. They left, what, two? 200. So they said, listen, when the, when the Feast of the Tabernacles take place, and the women are rejoicing in, in the field, then y'all go out and snatch one of them. Statue of grass, yeah. But they said, we won't fight against you. 
Because, see, they were to protect the women as they were going forth when they would have that type of feast. But they said, listen, we will, we'll, we'll stand back and let you get these sisters so that you can be repopulate the tribe. Amen. Because they wanted them to marry those that were of the tribe of Israel. Amen. Want them to marry in the tribe. Just like we say we folk, like folks to marry in the church. And you got to marry somebody who don't know what a church is. <laughs> if there ever be a church. And then bring them to us and say, this is who I'm married. The Lord said it. <laughs> and then expect us, Lord help us. <laughs> My sister one time wanted me to speak to some guy. And I just asked him, I said, well, I don't know who you are. I said, you could be a pedophile for all I know. And sisters, sisters, if the brother, if they don't even know him at the church that he's supposed to be going to, don't you think something wrong? <laughs> he say he go to so and so church, and nobody knows he go there, but he just shows up on the high days of Christmas and Easter. And just because his mama go there don't mean he go there. Let me finish up. We just Bible study, ain't we? So notice that. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Notice, because of the Lord's mercy, Lamentation 3.22, because of his mercy. Now notice, he could have allowed them to be wiped out. But he has mercy on them. He has mercy and compassion. Notice, God yet has mercy. When a person turns to God, he has mercy on them. See, it's not about all oh, this. We need to understand this. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. Amen. He wouldn't have went through Amen. the intricate yeah. details of sending his only begotten son Amen. into this world to save and deliver if he wanted everybody just to go to hell. Amen. All he had to do was destroy us in the first place. Amen. He's not willing any parents. All come to repentance. He would that all men be saved. Amen. He wants to save. Amen. But he's going to save on his terms. Amen. His terms are you got to repent. Amen. He's not going to condone what a person's in when it's outside of his word. Amen. He's not going to sanction anything that's outside of his word. Amen. But when a person makes up in their mind and say, you know what, I'm tired. See, you got to be tired of your mess. Yeah. And what's happening today is folks ain't tired of your mess. They want you to agree with their mess. You want somebody to agree with what you're in when you're not tired of it. But when you get tired of it, when you come to yourself and recognize, you know what, this ain't helping me. This is destroying me. Then what you do is you say, God, I'm sorry. See, a person won't repent till they first know they're wrong. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so notice that when a person repents, he says that what I, I, I'm, I'm faithful and just. That's what he said. Faithful and just. To forgive. And to do what? To cleanse from all unrighteousness. That cleansing is at the point that we say yes to him and it's a continuous cleanse. So it's at the point where a person says yes to God, he cleanses and he keeps on clean, clean. So it's not a process of just one time. We confess faith to him and say yes to him, he saves us. At that point, at that very second, at that very instant, we become a candidate for heaven. But since he knows we're not just going to die right then, he got to keep on watching. 
cleanses it. Cleanses it. Keeps on washing it. Keeps on cleansing it. Keeps on working it. The willing to do of his good pleasure. Are you listening? So notice, notice what we see here. I, I, I'm close. Notice what we see here. When there is a void of God, yes. there's a void of true worship. Yes. Yes. When there's a void of God and then there's no true worship, then there's a deterioration yes. of our judgment, yes. of our values. Yes. And then what happens is because of the deterioration, then there becomes judgment against us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we turn away from sin yes. and turn to the living Savior, yes. then we see mercy there. Yes. We see compassion there. Yes. And what does he do? He builds. He adds to. Yes. He builds up. Yes. He multiplies. Yes. As we turn to him. Yes. As we say yes to him. That not only works in the scripture that we've just read, but it works today. Yes, amen. A person can change. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this just because they're folk in the church and they still acting like they ain't changed don't mean God's word is, is not true. Because God will change. God changes lives. And He changes lives for the better. Yes, He does. I got some witnesses here that know that the best thing you do is to say yes to Jesus. I got some witnesses here that know that you won't be, you don't regret nothing since you yet to say yes to Jesus. The only thing, mother, that I regret is I didn't say yes soon. He'll help you. He'll strengthen you. And I'm not saying that even in the midst of because just because you're saved don't mean trials and tribulations don't come to you. Yes. You're gonna suffer something. Yes. But it's better to go through with Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Because he'll strengthen the inner man. He'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Tell him hallelujah. These things in this script in the scripture are for our learning. These things are for our learning. They're examples to us. And if they're an example to us, it is to show us what we're to do and what we're not to do. Yes, so as a believer in Christ, God has always got to be the center of my life. Amen. When I got the right focus on God, I got the right focus on worship. Amen. When I've got the right focus on God, and my worship is right, then my values are going to be right. Amen. And my standards are going to be right. Yes. So the bottom line is to keep God as the center of attraction. Yes. Amen. Keep God at the head of your life. Let God be on the throne of your life. The only God that should be on the throne of your life is the true and living God. And when he's there, he'll direct you in the right way. He'll, in all your ways, you'll have a mind to acknowledge him when he's at the center of your life. In all your ways, you acknowledge him. And the Bible says he will. Not maybe, not could be, not might. He will direct your path. And God always directs us in a path of righteousness. For he leads us in a path of righteousness for a name's sake. He ain't doing it for me, but he's doing it because his name is out. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. His name is out. But his name is out. He glory to God. He's going to keep me because his name is out. Yeah. He's going to strengthen me because his name is out. Yeah. 
that's beyond my control, God. I've got the, I, I hear what everybody else is saying, but i got to hear your voice. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So all these things are not just something the church is telling us to do. These things are our lifeline. They keep us with a mind to serve Him. They keep us with a mind to obey Him. They keep us with a focused mind. And then we come together and speak the same thing. To encourage one another. Yeah. To provoke one, provoke one another unto love yeah. and good works. Yeah. To tell folk, keep on doing what you do. Yeah. Keep on holding on to God. Yeah. God's got an answer for you. God's got deliverance for you. God's got a healing for you. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This thing is real. It's real. And as we see the day approaching, as we see the day approaching, it's more and more that we've got to run to the ark and say, and make, our, make sure that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. Oh, bless his name. I feel the pain. Lord, it may not have been on the level of action, but the Lord is here. Lord is here. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God wants yokes destroyed. He wants yokes destroyed. Hallelujah. And that's in, in the Old Testament when we look at the kings, God would tell those kings, go in there and tear down all in the high places. Tear them down. The kings that God would honor were the kings that would tear down the high places. All of those areas he, that were places that idol gods would worship. He said tear them down. So in our heart every day we need to say Lord tear it down. Every high place. Every high place. You tear it down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to tell them, as, as God told Elijah to tell them, to tear uh, the, those that were around the altar, he said, tear that altar down and build it again. Hallelujah. Then Baal worship and all of that, tear it down and build again. Hallelujah. And in our hearts, we just have to say, Lord, tear it down. And build it again. Over to God. Hallelujah. Build it how you want it built. The way you want it built. It's not my will, but thine be done. It's not my way, God, but it's your way. Your will. Your purpose. Your expectation. Your desire. God, your desire is my desire. Your will, God, is my will. I yield my will to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Let's just stand and worship the Lord. 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 Let's just worship the Lord. Let's just stand and 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 worship the Lord. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship the Lord, worship him. Come on, Zion. Everybody in here can worship the Lord. Whether you sit or stand, you can worship the Lord. Worship is in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I didn't say worship me, I said worship God. You ain't too big to worship God. Come on, worship the Lord. Worship him, worship him. Give him glory. Give him the worship. Give him the honor of doing things. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. How do
He said, these signs shall follow them. That believe. He said, in your name. We lay hands on the sick. And then all shall And they shall recover. The Lord is in your name. We lay hands in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for it now, God. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on and give him some praise for God. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 Thank